obviously I'm in the middle of a process here. Um, I just got out the shower, hair's drying, the hair color goes on after. I'm also filming that, so that's neither here nor there. But, oh my gosh, there's hair everywhere. <laughs> now my nose is itchy. Okay. So today we're just going to do one prompt, and it is I Once Thought. So, I'm going to be reading off of my little notes. Um... And I'm just going to read them in the order that I wrote them. So I once thought, if a spell is going to work, it is better to follow one from a trusted source or book. So, so basically this comes from me not being uh, raised by anybody who really talked about let alone believed in magic and spell work was not a thing that was discussed. So everything that's everything that, that I used to define what a spell was and whether it worked or didn't or what made it work was based off of my personal research and what I was finding and what I was reading at those times. Um, and it's very interesting too for me because I wasn't really convinced in the beginning that spell work could work. It was one of those like, I have to believe it for it to happen, but if I have to see it to believe it, then how is it going to happen? And I guess I kind of like put myself in that like loop. Um, so I told myself, well, if I try spells that have already been tested and considered to be good enough to publish, then that's where I should start at the very least. And, you know, thanks also to, um, tons of YouTube, <laughs> um, and Googling, I should say more than YouTube at that time. Um, I was able to, with the years, completely change the way that I thought about that. But I thought that if, it wasn't already written down by somebody else other than me, then there's no way that it was going to work. And that kind of got me into a little bit of trouble because even when I didn't believe that that had to be the case and I started like using my own um, creativity to make my own spells and cater them to me and my situations... I got into trouble because as I continued to expand my knowledge of the craft and all things related to that and the occult, I thought that if I read a book and it had good reviews or if it started off good, that that meant that I had to like the whole book, every part of it, even the author, and that now I had to practice in that specific way. So what I began to do when I caught myself doing this and realized that that's not a good thing, what I began to do was I would grab a sticky note and I would write on it, um, take what works, leave the rest and, or some variation of that. And I would write that not in the beginning, but when I would start a book, as soon as I would hit resistance on a thought or on something that I read, or I didn't like the way that something was said about a specific group of people or whatever the reason was that I had a concern with, um, that book or that writer, author, I would write that sticky note and said, that's okay. I don't have to like everything. It would be kind of weird and ridiculous if I did. And that kind of like helped me move out of that. But, um, yeah, I feel like I just word vomited a bunch of different ideas from different times in my craft. <laughs> It's a mess, y'all. It's a mess. Um, so yeah, that was one of my once thoughts. Uh, let me see. Okay, this is a good one. Uh, then I wrote, I once thought if you were not taught by a family member or an elder of the craft, then your craft isn't real and it isn't valid. And this had to do with hearing from other people because I didn't know anybody when I first started that did these things. So I had nobody to really talk to. So everything, all of my belief 
system was built around what I was reading, what I was researching, what I was hearing, and what other people were saying. And a lot of elder practitioners um, would say those things. Uh, and these are different types of like systems and practices. This isn't, I'm not talking about one specific one. I'm talking about, um, the, the sum of everything that I knew at that time, there were more than just one person that pertained to different belief systems that believed that, um, you couldn't just learn it off of the internet basically, which is kind of what I was doing, learning off of the internet and learning from books. And that could segue into a whole different discussion about a book that I'm reading right now. But anyways, before I go there, uh, yeah, I used to think that you had to kind of be born into the family that was already doing the thing to be a part of the thing. And if you weren't, then no matter what you did, you could have called yourself by anything. You were still going to be not that. And it took me a while to let go of that belief system as well. And it was so easy for me to believe it because I've always felt like there wasn't a place for me in terms of what I was searching for spiritually. So it just made sense that there wasn't going to be space for me there either. And yeah, that sounds very sad <laughs> to say, but that's how I felt at the time. So no matter who would have closed the door? I would have totally believed it. It's not the case anymore. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my second, I once thought. Uh, my third one. Okay, this is also in terms of like having the right to uh, practice. So I have a lot of, I made this into like a large blanket statement with fill in the blank. So I put, you must be blank or have done blank or own blank or have read blank to ride. And I put ride because, uh, it reminded me of, you have to be this tall to ride on this roller coaster. You know, you have to be this tall. If you don't meet the height requirements, you just can't get on the ride. So that's kind of where I came up with that. And that kind of just covers, I think some of what I already said, but I felt like it covered everything that I didn't say. <laughs> so sometimes we, like I said, we listen to so many different people. We look for information on the internet and nothing is being filtered when you're desperately looking for every little bit and piece of that thing to try to make something out of it because you don't have anything to base it off of. So, you know, you get popular um, magical books that maybe aren't that great bleeding in to the like really good magical texts and then who dictates what makes them good like we're basing them off of reviews that we see and unfortunately but maybe I don't know I guess a lot of people are afraid to do bad reviews so you know, it's kind of like we need bad reviews so we can see why people think they're bad because it might be a reason why we don't want to pick up the text maybe at that time. But then I'm also thinking, uh, yeah, I guess because time is precious. So you don't want to waste your time reading things that aren't going to help you. But I don't feel that anything is a waste of time. So that's kind of contradictory to my belief right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, welcome to my mind. Um, but what I was trying to say with that is, yes, there's certain circumstances and certain um, closed practices that require a level of attainment of something before you can do said thing. But what I'm referring to is not that. Um, I'm mainly referring to when you first start and somebody tries to basically say, you can't sit with us, you know, like you're just trying to learn what you can. And somebody's telling you, well, you're not allowed access to this knowledge because I don't think you're cool enough or you're not allowed to practice because you're 15 or you're not allowed to practice this because you weren't raised that way. Oh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> you're not allowed to practice this because 
you just don't get it. You're not allowed to practice this because you haven't read um, these all of Agrippa's books. I don't know. Like, <laughs> put whatever condition here um, after you're not allowed to practice. And pretty much that's what I'm referring to. Um, and I guess this kind of goes back to like, I don't want to bring up the Salem witch trials, but any type of persecution that has been brought upon because somebody was doing something that was different than what was accepted at the time by the people who were in power at the time. That, that kind of really bothers me because I think that the attainment of knowledge should not come at the cost of your freedom or your life. And that's kind of what that statement made me feel is you're not allowed here. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. <laughs> ironically, <laughs> ironically, I use that because um, I'm not the tallest person in the world. So that thought was just a little funny one. But yeah, I think um, that's enough of me blabbering. I'm sure there's so many other I once thoughts, but I think I covered exactly what I needed to say at the time. And hopefully I was uh, coming across as clear as I meant to be and not just like a fucking jumbled mess of words. But yeah, gotta go dye my hair and I will see y'all tomorrow for the next prompt or two or three. I don't know.